Hello, aloha. And um, if we have not met yet, I'm Fleur, the face behind Aloha Monday Teaching, where I help science teachers like me and you be more intentional, prepared, and refreshed for Monday or any day of the week um, so we can be the best for our students. So today in today's video, we're going to talk about um, a salinity and density lab. This is a resource that you can find, but um, this is based on this little blog post here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, today we're going to look we're going to go over these things. So what's included in the resource, um, the materials that you need to complete this salinity and density lab, when you would use this lab, and then we'll go through the lab procedure so you can see how it's done. And then, um, and then we'll conclude with where you can get yours. All right, so here's what's in this resource. I've got um, a PowerPoint. It's editable so that you can, if you need to make any adjustments, you can. Um, the video, so this video here or similar that shows you the procedure will be in there. The lesson plan for you and for students, there is a student sheet. It takes them through the scientific method. It matches up with the PowerPoint and um, an answer key for you to make it a little easier to grade. So this salinity and density lab is really fun. We did this, um, my, me and my teammate, we did this last school year. Um, we did it well twice now. And it's just a lot of fun because we made it where you the kids have to guess which water has the most salinity. So we don't tell them what has more salt or anything like that. They have to figure it out. So they have to, it helps them understand how salinity and density are related. So these are the materials that you need. They're very simple materials, um, hot water and salt, and I'll go through that in the procedure, but I basically mix the hot water with salt so that it dissolves better. And I stored them in big gallon water jugs um, and then I add food coloring. So you need food coloring, three, I just did these colors here that you see on your screen and you'll need cups and a beaker and a pipette or a dropper for them to drop the water in. All right, so when would you use this salinity and density lab? So obviously density is a big science concept. It can be taught in any time, but when we teach this is during our ocean currents, when we're when the kids are learning about deep ocean currents in particular, because of the salinity piece, um, where for deep ocean currents to form, <clears throat> excuse me, the water needs to be extremely cold and extremely salty, right? And then it'll sink deeper and then it creates that deep ocean current. And so this lab um, just does the salinity piece and, and it relates it to density. The NGSS standard listed here is what this lab will support um, to help you teach these concepts. All right, so let's go ahead and do the salinity and density lab as you would show your students how to do this. The materials that you're going to have are three different samples of water. And a tip to do this, um, what I what we did was we used big gallon jugs and we used hot water to mix the salt. So in each jug, I put a lot of hot water and in one jug, I added a lot of salt. I did at least two beakerfuls of salt and then I added food coloring and shook it up real good. In the second one, I did about half of that amount of salt, so about a beaker and then shook it up. And then in the other one, there's no salt. Um, so the clear one in this case has no salt and the red had the most and the blue had the second amount. Um, you won't tell the kids that because they need to figure out which one has the most salinity when they do this lab. So what you would give the kids, eventually it would, um, all, the water would be the same temperature. So they, you know, they sit for the whole day in their room temperature at that point when you get through all your classes. The only difference is the amount of salt. So the first step that the students will do, this is what they will get on their trays. They will get the water samples in the cups. They'll have a beaker and the pipette. So these are all of the materials you would give to the students. And the first step is to add the clear water. They're gonna pour about 100 milliliters and you can have them stir. I tell them to stir it before they put they, before they put it into the beaker just to mix up the salt. So like, so they'll stir that and then pour it in. Then they're going to take the blue first. 
I have them put their dropper all the way to the bottom of the cup because sometimes the salt will sit at the bottom. Then when you tell them to drop it in, make sure they don't put it down the middle. They wanna put it against the glass on the inside of the beaker as low as they can go and then just drop it in there. We're gonna do, we're gonna do three drops of each, well, three full ones. And each time they do this, they want you want them to observe it at eye level. So right now, the blue is at the bottom. So let me lift it carefully. I don't want it to mix. So you want to make sure that the kids don't mix it either. You don't want it all to get mixed up. Then we're going to do the same thing with the red. So we'll do three. So we're going to put it on the side and then drop it in. You can already see it with two. I'm just going to stop at two for this video. But um, when they look at it at eye level, you can see that the red went to the bottom and the blue is in the middle and the clear is on top. So the kids will determine which one had the most salinity. And if they're understanding it correctly, they'll know that the red water had the most. It's the most dense. So it sank to the bottom. The blue had the second amount and the clear didn't have any salinity at all. And they'll talk about that in their conclusion. And that is the salinity and density lab. Okay, so that lab is a lot of fun to do. Uh, the kids, they really get into it trying to figure out which one has the most salt. And it really, really shows you who understands the relationship between salinity and density and you're able to clear up any misconceptions pretty quickly with just a few kids because there's just going to be those few that aren't getting it yet and that's okay so that's what we're there for so after watching this um so what are i'd like to know from you um just reply below what are some ways that you teach ocean currents or um, salinity and density and is there anything new that you will try after watching this video just let me know in the comments below and if you want to get your hands on this resource, just click in the link in the description, or you can also find me on Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search Aloha Monday Teaching, and you'll see all the different kinds of resources I have that can help you in this area. Like I've got a lot of things with, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. So, <laughs> and if you're watching this on YouTube, just like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything. And I will see you next time. Thank you.